the Houston Texans are making an important under the radar move. And I think it's, I think it just shows again that, that they get it and the future's bright. And I, I just, I love what the Texans are doing. If you're new to the channel, we're Detroit Lions fans, but we talk Texans. You, if you're new, you're thinking that's a little weird. I don't get it. That's okay. Hang in there. You get an unbiased look into your team. We like to talk about teams that kind of get overlooked from the national media. And we got on with the Texans um, about a year ago. And we've just been like, I think they're going to be good. And they were. And so we've kind of just stuck with the Texans. We like talking about them. And, uh, of course, we love the Lions. That's our team. But we like the Texans as well. A lot of real mirrored in, in what you guys are doing and what the Lions are doing. So it's fun to see. So here's the under-the-radar move. First of all, as we get about a week and a half away from the draft, the one thing that we're kind of looking at is, and I don't understand why it's so secretive and so, like, you got to really – dig in and fi figure out who the teams are meeting with before the draft when everything else in the, in football is like just so wide open you can see you can go in the locker rooms you know it's like you've got hard knocks but yet yeah who teams meet with before the draft they don't really talk about okay whatever you got to do the investigative reporting people are find out you find out eventually but what's cool about it is you can kind of read into what the team's looking to do texans I think are really honing in on just like, let's just get back to the basics of what our roster needs. We've, we've made the splashes, Daniel Hunter, Stefan Diggs, um, Joe Mixon. Like we, we know all the splash plays that those splash moves that they've made, but this is an under radar radar move where they have gone out and decided defensive back specifically safety. Let's hone in on bringing those guys in, getting to know them and making sure that we know who we're going to get because it's a need. It's a need, and it's something that is a priority for the Texans. So the move that they made was to talk to Kalen Bullock, and there's a couple other guys that they're talking to as well, and Jalen Simpson and Javon Bullard, and we'll talk about them as well. But Kalen Bullock is just is one of those sneaky guys that has just like doesn't the opposite of bust, right? He's written all over him. He's got the, like, this is going to work. Why is it no... Why aren't more people talking about him? So one of the few bright spots for the Trojans defense under Lincoln Riley. That's a problem too, right? The USC just, you're just, you're not thinking, oh my gosh, defensive unit out there in USC, like unlike Michigan or Georgia. So that's problem number one. But Bullock shined in 2024. He had 61 tackles, seven pass breakups, two interceptions in his final year before declaring for the draft he's fast and he's tall <laughs> which i love at safety ran a 448 and he's 62 188 what's cool about that is you can you feel like he could put on 10 pounds easy you know so at 62 195 you you're feeling pretty good about it but this guy has got the range and he's got the ability to be a really good player so to bring him in and kind of identify him as a round three guy perfect so i love that the texans are doing that let me know your thoughts in the comments as you see some of these guys and, and who you might like or who you've maybe had your eye on i know that as i kind of read up on him i'm more and more i liked him so like i said 6'2, 188 447 in the 40 yard dash yep yep love it Houston is looking for position flexibility heading into year two of the D'Amico Ryan's era. The nickel position is one area that remains unknown given the status of the safety room. So one thing they're talking about is can we get somebody in here that can play safety, can play nickel, can play a different position if we need them? Like that's what everybody wants. It's hard to find those. Everyone says that they've found that person, but it's hard. And, and uh, one of our guys on the lions, talked about that he talked about how each position in the secondary is completely different and so to be like hey man just jump back at safety but it's like no i i don't even know where i'm supposed to be right it's a completely different thing so they also brought in jalen simpson jalen simpson love him visiting the texans so he ran a four four forty 40 inch vertical 11 one on the broad jump both ranked inside the top 10 among safety prospects. So physically, he's there. They're looking for position flexibility in the second secondary heading into year two of the D'Amico Ryan's era. The nickel position, just like what we just read, right? And so they want flexibility. Another one, Javon Bullard. Same thing. 
good speed, rangy, got, you know, all the things that you say, but he's a little bit smaller at 5'10, but he's a bigger, thicker, a little bit bigger of a hard hitter. And so clearly the Texans are looking at and how do we get better in the secondary? And I think that's just the right move. And to see them doing that, it's like, thank you. Right. So what these, 30 visits are all about, in my opinion, is to find those third, fourth rounders, spend some time with them. These guys aren't on the headliners. They're not guys maybe that are in the draft that are in in the uh, combine that you're paying as much attention to all those things. So let's, let's spend a little bit more time with them. You you don't need to spend time with a blue chip player, Marvin Harrison. I got it. I don't need to spend time with you. I need to spend time with guys that I don't know. There could be something there. They didn't have the productivity in college, or maybe they didn't have the measurables. So they're not going to just jump out, but that's what, that's the real GM work. I mean, it's fun for us. Mel Kuyper, we can throw names out there all day long. And uh, yeah, and, and honestly, Mel Kuyper and all those guys do pretty much like an incredible job to take 500 guys and windle them down to like, who's going to get drafted where I think they're generally pretty right. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't pick it perfectly, but I think generally a third round guys. So it's really impressive. But my point is you, you have to spend time with those guys and it's not just us saying, oh, yeah, pick them. It's like, man, it's how's his nutrition? What was he like in high school? What? I mean, you, you got to know this stuff because you, you build teams through the draft. Everybody knows that, but can you really do it? And so the Texans look at your star players and your meat of your team, you drafted them and that's has to continue in order for them to be successful and continue to build off all of this momentum that they have. So right now, this is just one, of course, mock draft Peyton Willis Wilson, excuse me, from NC state. We looked at Edrin Cooper as well. We did kind of a, a breakdown on these, these three guys right here. And what we loved about that was, You can't go wrong at pick 42. And we did a breakdown of this the other day, and it's just ridiculous how much talent is at 42. Because you look at guys like Bo Nix. Like, Bo Nix is not lasting to 44. I mean, so, like, push those quarterbacks up, and you drop down more and more talent. And, you know, four, five, six quarterbacks go in the first 42 picks. Then that leaves just, you know, you're really picking 34, 36, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You you. Yeah, you're picking 42, but there's so many quarterbacks that are going to go. Obviously, you don't need a quarterback, so you're all set. And so you're going to find really good players there, guys, later on in the draft. So it's really good stuff for the Texans. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new or if you've been watching for a while and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We'll see all of you on the next one.